Hello. You know, when I originally signed up to give this talk, I thought it was maybe a little different audience. So this is essentially the same paper I gave last year. So sorry about that. That seems we can make it a little more interesting. I um, so I wore a couple different hats. I work for Metropolitan, and we're at the sort of the end of the pipe of the Colorado River, and so that's why that's our why we're interested. I also, though, am representing the Six Agency Committee, which is the organization in California that represents the California water interests with regard to Colorado River. And Metropolitan is one of those agencies. Also, I'm coordinating the efforts among the seven basin states for weather modification as a cooperative effort. And some of the team is in here. We have Barry Lawrence from Wyoming and Joe Busso from Colorado. I see Dave Cole from Utah. And so these are the folks that I deal with uh, throughout the year to make sure that we uh, get our projects going. Okay, what do I, how do I, okay, so just an outline of what we're doing. We're going to talk a little bit about the process, the agreements we have in place, what we've been doing the last couple of years, a long-term action plan that we're developing, and then what the future holds for us. Just by way of review, we're looking at winter storms here. We want to increase runoff. We're hoping to, that's our main thing, we're hoping to increase some runoff. So one of the reasons we're together, the, the nation states work together, is just based on the original Colorado River Compact of 1922. Now, the whole law of the river is quite complicated. There are dozens of documents. There are Supreme Court decrees, legislation, agreements, treaties. Uh, but this is just sort of the mother document that, that brings our states together. Uh, starting in May, or about mid-2004, the states realized that we were in a drought, and they decided to start working on actions that would lessen the severity of it or maybe offset the beginning. And about a year later, the secretary also got involved, Secretary of the Interior, and said to the states, we're looking at, I'm trying to, the secretary said, I'm trying to develop a process to develop some shortage guidelines, to coordinate the operations of Lakes Powell and Mead. And we're asking that you also join me here and, and consider things that we can do. In August of that year, the states continued their discussions and developed conceptual agreements on three broad strategies. These three broad strategies were enumerated in, a, in another letter to the Secretary in February of the next year, that they would coordinate, how we would coordinate reservoir management there's a process of intentionally created surplus, what types of extraordinary conservation measures the states could do to create additional water. There would be some banking in Lake Mead. Under the second item of system efficiency and management, they put uh, a regulating reservoir in the All-American Canal, getting ready to start construction right now, do some conservation measures. And then of interest to us was augmentation of supply. And that had to do with tamarisk management, which is an invasive on the river and of also weather modification. In uh, 2006, about, about the same time, uh, I met Larry Jernstad, and we, he told me about uh, one of his clients, the Southwestern Water Conservation District in the Durango area, how they had exhausted their, their funds for their weather modification program, and were looking maybe for an extension. Uh, we partnered with the Colorado Water Conservation Board, and we're able to, the Lower Basin that is a uh, trial extension, contributed $45,000 to extend their season. It was a very dry year there as well, I should, I should mention. And they uh, continued to see, I think it was about 1,700 hours in five basins. It was quite successful. I think the locals were happy. Colorado was happy. The basin states were happy. And with that, we took that momentum and sort of built on that and said, well, why don't we do a more standard agreement, you know, a, sort of a big base agreement for everyone. So there are three agreements. There's one with the three lower basin states, California, Arizona, Nevada, one with Colorado, another with Utah, and another with Wyoming. And again, we're only focusing on winter storms. It's the states run the programs the way they want to. The lower basin, all we do is contribute funds and let let the locals operate the way they want to and let the states regulate the way they want to. Uh, and they, of course, manage all the, the regulatory uh, controls. Everybody contributes something and everybody benefits. 
For example, uh, we look for outreach and some administrative support, some technical support from the local agencies and from the states themselves, the upper basin states. So it's, it's a team effort. And of course, the benefits go down to the individual watershed all the way down to, you know, to reaching Mexico because the more water in the system, the more water for everybody. Uh, yeah, we've decided that the water is, nobody can put their name on it. It's not attributable to any one, one entity. It just goes into the system for everyone to use. And uh, we operate by consensus. If somebody doesn't want to participate one year, then we, we won't have the program. So like I mentioned, we have these three base agreements. We have annual amendments where we decide if we want to, if we want to do something or not. Uh, it, it, everything's cost share equally among the lower basin. There's no fund shifting. What that means is that the local agencies as well as the state agencies must continue the same level of funding they have historically. Now that our money is coming in, they can't shift their funds somewhere else. And these are just grants. And there's, you know, we get that, we get billed at the end of the year. Utah just, each state does things a little differently. At the end of the year, Utah bills us and says, this is what we spent of, that we know you, you will reimburse us for. And so we just pay them. They share their data with us. And there are certain deliverables that the agreements call for where we uh, want to show, we want to, at least in the lower basin, we want to see what do we get for our money? What are the benefits there? And we want to be able to, to show that we're meeting our goals. Because this money is being sent, spent so far away from home, our, our local customers want to know why you're spending money you know, a thousand miles away. So that's why we have these deliverables in place. Usually about July of each year, we start planning for the next winter. And then about September is when we get the deliverables from the previous winter. That's sort of how, how the system works. So building on that success for the trial extension in the San Juans in 06, for what year 07, we uh, budgeted, we actually budgeted, I think maybe $200,000, but just couldn't use it all. So about 131,000 was spent in what year 07. Like I say, it was cost shared. Uh, we extended some operations in uh, Colorado and Utah. Well, they extended, we just provided funds for it. Did some, did an evaluation in Colorado, uh, did some instrument deployment in Wyoming. This is just a modest, a modest increase from the year before is what is about, uh, I guess it's about tripled. These are the seven project areas that we worked for and worked in 2007 as well as 2008. We have one uh, in Wyoming and uh, a couple in Utah and most, most in Colorado. This past winter, we had budgeted just under $300,000, you know, 98 per state. And in trying to figure out what we wanted to do, tried to find what we thought would, would satisfy everybody. And we ended up with about 71% in operations. 29% of that was spent on equipment and studies. Uh, we did some extensions in Colorado and Utah. Again, the same equipment lease in Wyoming. Purchased uh, six icing rate sensors, three in each of the states, Colorado and Utah. Did some generator upgrades in Colorado. So where are we going next? Uh, looking at a long-term action plan. This would be the technical staff, the folks I mentioned earlier. We're, we're working together to figure out where ultimately we're going. What are our goals? Are we getting uh, bang for the buck? It's, uh, it's flexible. We, we can change it, but we just want to kind of get everything on paper and know what all of our options are and have just sort of a menu of projects there that we can pick and choose. And they could be anything, you know, because we want to do these incremental expansions. We want to optimize some of the operations, uh, put in new equipment, and make a plan for long-term operations. We, have a, we don't have a first draft yet of this plan, but ultimately, at least the way, the way I'm thinking, is we want to seed everything possible in, in every watershed if, if we can. That's where ultimately, hopefully, we, we would go, but I don't know yet. We have procedures and those are the things I've mentioned. And we'll set our priorities. What we do, too, is we're going to use different vendors. We want to use different data. We want to learn, take everything learned from Wyoming, uh, ultimately, and not everything, but whatever we can that's useful in other places and see what we can, what we can learn from them and to improve all the operations. What are some of the issues that I'm facing? I'm trying to get the people 
that are unfamiliar with this technology and, and this, uh, this water management tool to start thinking about it as a standard tool in a portfolio, it's just like you turn on and off a groundwater basin. I'd like to see them use this every year. And I, wanna, I need to start explaining to them, like sort of start standardizing the products here, explain to them what they get. And I kind of do an apples, uh, if I can, to, to apples comparison with traditional engineering projects. Because uh, my organization, engineering organization, they love concrete. And they don't really understand this so much. And so that's, that, that's the challenge that I'm faced. Of course, we want to advance the science. Uh, and I need to do just marketing in general in Southern California. Because there's a lots of uh, confusion out there. Uh, for example, I, I heard you had a discussion last night about uh, what's going on in China, and that's, you know, that's just.